Wow, we did it. Check this out. The battery is charging. It's now in forced loading mode and uh, yeah, it's taking on power. Uh, also in the mobile app for the BYD, uh, well, we can't see this anymore. Okay, but anyways, uh, I saw that 2.5 amps was uh, going into the battery and the uh, voltage was rising. So, yay! We did it! Well, we even brought out the oscilloscope, but we didn't have to play with that. But uh, yeah, now we can continue with the setup. So while we are emergency charging the battery, what did Dala do wrong? Was it A. Terminating resistor B. Incorrect setup C. Faulty wiring or D. All of them So the issue was actually here. Uh, one of these uh, cables uh, came loose so while we were wiggling it we could feel that yeah it just slid right out. So the communication line was broken but once that was reapplied everything just started to work. Very nice. I was a bit disappointed that we didn't get to use the oscilloscope, so let's find another use for it. I really wanted to learn more about it, and the best way is to experiment. This scope, by the way, was funded by you amazing patrons and will be a great addition to the channel. An oscilloscope allows for way better visualization of electric signals compared to a multimeter. Here I am testing out all four channels to see that they display the test signal correctly. It worked a treat, so let's hook it up to the Modbus D- and D+, signal. Before we connect the probes, uh, we've hooked up the ground reference to each other to improve signal quality. Nice! Now I won't go into super detail how the Modbus RTU protocol works, but I really wanted to see the waveform. When one signal is pulled low, the other one is pulled high. It should look something like this picture. The oscilloscope has a math function, so we set it up to subtract one signal from the other and display the result as a white line. Here you can see some examples of transmission bursts that we managed to capture. Very cool stuff that you wouldn't be able to see with only a multimeter. Another thing that we can deduce with the oscilloscope is the board rate. By setting the cursors to the start-stop side, we can see that the devices operate at roughly 9200 board rate. Don't take these measurements too seriously, we're just messing around with this particular scope to learn more about it. Ok, now let's get to actually reverse engineering this. We'll start by hooking up a computer to it. I've patched into the wiring and uh, connected a cheap Modbus to USB adapter. With this adapter we can fire up PuTTY and look at the serial data. Again here is a reminder why I'm doing this. My end goal is to get rid of the expensive BID battery and install a used EV battery instead with massive capacity. We need to establish what Modbus registers are pulled by the solar inverter which is acting as a master. Now this putty printout looks like a scrambled mess and <laughs> to be honest I'm not getting much out of this. If you have any tips on what I should use to interpret the Modbus requests passively that would be great, so leave a comment below. I would dislike to have to actively join the bus and start polling registers. By looking at the open Sunspec Modbus Excel sheet we know what the Modbus registers correspond to. So. It should be fairly simple to start figuring out which registers we will need to spoof later on. I feel like this requires a whole different video, so let's keep this one short and sweet and celebrate the fact that we got it running. Hope you liked this video, and if you have a Fronius inverter and are interested in this project, support it by liking, sharing and smashing that subscribe button. Dollar out.